What's up everybody, Dan from Headwaters, and today I wanted to do a real simple video just explaining the differences between sit inside kayaks and sit on top kayaks. A lot of you guys ask what's right for you. I'm hoping to give you a little education and break it down today. So I chose these two recreational kayaks because they're very similar in size and kind of similar in who would buy them. Uh, this is a Feel Free Aventura 110. Over here I have the Feel Free Juntos. So to my right, the sit inside kayak. You sit inside it because you have a cockpit and you're down in the boat, as opposed to a sit on top where you're up on top of the boat. Now there's benefits to having your legs down below. For one, you're gonna get out of the sun a little bit. You can put a spray skirt around the cockpit if you want. Keep the sun out, keep the water out, keep you dry. With your legs being down in the boat, you can also connect to the thigh braces and have a little bit more control of the kayak if you wanted to get into edging or leaning. You're a little bit more one with the kayak than you would be if you're just simply sitting on top. And with the sit inside, because your butt is actually below the water line, you can achieve the same stability, but with a much sleeker design. As you elevate your center of gravity up, the boat has to become wider to now compensate for that higher center of gravity. So the nice thing about a sit on top now is you don't have a cockpit to worry about. You don't have anything that can fill with water. The water comes over the top of this and it can just drain right out through the holes. You'll notice throughout the boat, we've got scupper holes here, here, and here. If a wave comes over, it drains right out. The water line of the boat is below those scuppers, so the buoyancy keeps the boat riding nice and high, and the water is just below those scuppers, so when the waves come over the top, it can just drain right out. Now, on a sit inside, if the waves come up over the top and you don't have a skirt on, you now have a cockpit full of water. So typically, if somebody's paddling a boat like this in waves and a chop, you're gonna see them wearing a spray skirt. This particular boat has a bulkhead behind the seat, which is nice because that means you can actually self-rescue or do an assisted rescue. You can have somebody grab the front of the boat, tilt it upright, the water's gonna drain out the cockpit and you can get back in from the water. Without that, you're kind of pulling the boat, swimming the boat to shore, and it's a lot more work. Regardless, if you're paddling a sit inside, far offshore, you either want sealed bulkheads or get yourself some flotation. They make inflatable bags, they go up in the bow, go in the stern, and prevent the boat from filling fully with water. Now with the sit on top, you just don't have to worry about that. You can just hop back on. If I'm on the water, I can just grab on the side of the boat, pull myself up into the cockpit, swing my feet, and paddle on. If I'm going through a surf break and it comes up over the deck, it's gonna hit the deck, drain through the hole. One of the things I like about sit and sides is there's more to learn. It takes a little bit more education, but there's a lot more you can learn with this kayak. Eventually, you can even learn to roll these things over. So if you were to capsize, you could just roll it right back up. The other thing to think about is getting in and out of the boat. With the sit inside, you have to work a little bit more to get your legs down underneath the boat, but once you're in there, you're a lot more connected. With the sit on top, you can simply sit your butt down, swing your feet in, and away you go. I often equate this to bicycles because I ride a lot of bikes. And to me, a sit on top like this equates to a beach cruiser. You swing a leg over it, you start pedaling, you got a coaster brake, there's not a whole lot to it. It's simple, it's easy to use, and everyone's having a good time. With a sit inside, it's like a bike with gears. There's a little bit more to learn, but you can also have a little bit more controlled experience. You can do a little bit more with a sit inside. A lot of sit insides will have perimeter deck lines and bungee. That gives you storage on the deck. Say if I wanted to put a, a bilge pump or a paddle float or maybe a little map or, I mean, you name it. I put my water bottle under here a lot of times, as well as perimeter lines that allow me to hold onto the boat and move myself around the boat. On a sit on top, sometimes you'll have bungee up front this boat actually has a place where you could mount it. But sit on tops, you oftentimes have bungee in a tank well. The tank well is the part behind you where you can stick a big dry bag back there. You could put a crate, you could put a tackle box. It's sort of like the pickup truck bed of the kayak world. And sit in sides, typically, not always, you'll have a hatch that opens up and in a compartment where you can put your stuff down inside the kayak. So that's good if you wanted to put camping gear or you know dry bag with a beach towel, things that you're gonna want access to throughout the day, but you don't necessarily need access to all day. Inside a sit inside, you usually have an adjustable foot pedal system. On this particular one, it's got a knob where you can turn and adjust the foot pedals to you because your fit is very important in a sit inside. You want your feet touching the foot pedals, your knees touching the thigh braces, your butt engaging the seat, and then the back there to help engage good posture. With a sit on top, you have a lot less of that. You're relying more on the backrest for your support. So it's typically gonna be a little taller, a little bit more supportive. In this particular boat, you have molded in foot pedals. You'll see this a lot on sit on tops. 
Some sit on tops nowadays also have adjustable foot pedals. This particular one is just built for simplicity, durability, so they use the molded foot pedals. So when I think about who these boats are right for, there's a lot of things that I gotta factor in. Like the weight of the kayak. You have to transport this thing off the water. You gotta be able to either lift it into the bed of a truck, put it on top of an SUV, and everyone's needs are different, everyone's strength's different. So you really gotta think about that. The sit inside is gonna be on average 10 to 15 pounds lighter than a comparable sit on top. Other factors is like your age, your flexibility. Are you worried about getting inside of a cockpit? Is that gonna be hard on your knees? Well, the sit on top might be an easier way to go because you just hop on, swing your feet. Are you more concerned about staying dry and feeling cozy? Then maybe a sit inside is gonna be a better option for you. The other factor you might consider is where are you gonna be paddling these things? Are you gonna be going offshore? Are you gonna be punching through surf? In that case, well, you may want a little sit on top that's easier to get through the surf. Are you gonna be going more long distance, lake paddling, touring? Well, in that case, I'd probably rather be in a sit inside. Um, we're here at the river today. We're gonna to run a wave train. Yes, you could do that in either boat, but if I was a beginner just starting off, I'd probably rather be on a sit on top where the waves can just roll over the top, drain through the holes. On either of these boats, we're kind of talking near shore kayaks. If you were to go to the ocean on this one, you could punch through the surf and have a great time close to shore, but this isn't a kayak that you would wanna take far offshore. This is a close to shore recreational kayak. When you get further from shore, you really want something longer with more glide that's gonna be less affected by the wind, and that's regardless of whether you're looking at a sit inside or a sit on top. Longer, narrower, is gonna be faster, sleeker, and more competent in open waters. Really, there's no right or wrong option. It really comes down to personal preference and what works out best for you. So the best advice I can give Sit in a few, try a few. If you have a local rental shop, maybe rent a couple and see kind of what your preferences are. But enough just talking about it. Let's go hit the water and see how these boats compare. So one of the nice things about a sit on top is just the ease of getting in and out. You can see I have it floating here in the water. I can just sit my butt down, get in position, swing my feet in and I'm, I'm paddling. That's all I gotta do. A sit on top is just a boat anybody can get in and basically immediately have success especially a recreational one like this. Just very, very easy to drive. You want to turn, you just give it a sweep and around it comes. A very flat, stable platform, so it doesn't feel tippy at all. It just feels like, like you can just sit on and go paddling. But you know what, I'm already wishing I had, there you go, a little bit more back support. You wouldn't think it makes that much of a difference having a deck to support your thighs, but when your thighs are supported, you can kind of use that to sit upright. A lot of times in a kayak, I see people kind of lounging back and sit on tops are especially notorious for that. And that's why you'll see a lot of them with big chairs or lawn chair seats is because it kind of tends to want to make you lean back. But when you're paddling, ideally you want your pelvis rotated forward so you can sit nice and upright and having a deck of a sitting side makes that a little easier. So although it's easy, it's definitely not the fastest thing in the world. It's easy to paddle. That's why you'll see kayaks like this in rentals everywhere because anybody can get in and be successful. But it's not easy, it's hard work, it's a little slow in the water, um, but again, very stable, very easy to get on and off. If I was gonna bring a kid or a dog, a good tool for that job. So one thing I see a lot from folks is they take a sit on top and they ram it up on the beach and then it's really hard to get out, especially if you have any sort of knee issues. This is what I recommend. Get your feet out on the side of the boat, swing your legs over, use your paddle for support, and now as you're getting up, you can push your hand on the kayak and pull yourself up. That way your knees are never bent more than 90 degrees. A lot easier to get in and out when your knees are at a 90 degree angle as opposed to having your feet way up and trying to, trying to get out. Now I'm gonna hop in the sit inside and test this one out. Getting in and out of a sit inside can be a little bit more tricky because you've gotta get your legs down in the cockpit. There's several ways to do it. One way is to just straddle the kayak, plop your butt in, and then get your feet in. Another option is to actually step down into the boat. This can be a little bit more precarious, but it's still, it's still doable. So what I typically do is put my paddle across the cockpit, get one leg down inside, drop my butt. Now I have the security of my other leg being in the water for support. I put my butt in and then get that other leg in the boat. So I'm already feeling a lot more connected to the boat. With the thigh support, I feel like I can pull myself upright a little easier. I'm less reliant on that backrest. Now I get a nice upright paddling position. The adjustable foot pegs offer a little bit more control of where my feet are going to go. So I'm a little bit more connected to the boat, a little better ergonomics. The ease of paddling is definitely significant. You put the paddle in the water and this boat wants to just glide with a little less effort than that sit on top. 
doesn't feel like you're plodding along so much. It feels like a better reward for your efforts. The stability is still huge. It almost feels, even though it's three inches narrower, I would say it almost feels more stable than that Huntos to me. Just being low in the boat, the boat kind of feels like it can rock and roll under me as opposed to being on top where it's all primary and then it gets to a point where it would want to go. In any kayak, it's always important to keep your nose over your belly button because your head's like the weight of a bowling ball and as it goes off to the side, the kayak wants to lean over. So trying to keep yourself up nice and straight will keep you nice and dry. Other cool things about sitting sides being locked in is you can control them more. See how I can rock the boat? Just by shifting my weight, my legs are locked in. So if I wanted to learn how to carve a turn at some point, I can drop my hip into the water, initiate a sweep stroke, and a sit inside is real easy to carve a turn on. Those skills can be learned on sit on tops as well, but just sit insides have a little bit more rock and roll because your center of gravity is lower in the boat. So you can kind of kind of engage that rock and roll a little bit more and still feel stable. That's called your secondary stability. You've got primary and secondary stability. Sit on tops often have more primary because you're higher center of gravity. Sit in sides will typically have better secondary because you're lower in the water. So sit in sides can be a little trickier to get in and out of because you do have a cockpit. I still don't recommend going all the way to the beach because what happens is you get your bow on shore, you keel in the water, and then your boat starts doing this. So I like to get into some nice shallow water, especially here we've got a, a long, easy to reach beach. And then I get one foot out at a time. And then I use that same technique of putting my paddle in the water and standing up. So a little trickier to get in and out, but definitely the trade-off is paddling performance on the water. So I thought instead of just talking about it, I really need to show you guys the rescue and the difference of a sit inside versus sit on top and the ease of how easy it is to get back onto one of these guys. Over we go. out of my hand, kick my feet to the surface. That's it. Now you're back to paddling. The water just drains right through the deck. And there we go. So I just wanted to demonstrate what happens when you tip this thing over and the cockpit gets full of water. So that's going to be my co-pilot. He's going to perform a T-rescue. If you're paddling a sit inside, you need to know a T-rescue. It is the number one most basic skill for sit inside kayakers. So I fall out of my boat. You'll see I got a boat full of water. That's gonna slide in. Give me a quick tea rescue. You can see why those deck lines come in handy because I can grab my boat, work myself around. Now I'm gonna kick my feet to the surface. Pull my chest up on the boat. That's got me, I'm not going over. Just like that. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today, you guys. We hope you had as much fun as we did making this video. I hope you found it educational. If nothing else, we hope you found it entertaining. Until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.